Hello, hello, lovely people. I'm Sarah Rifal. Welcome. And today I'll be guiding you through your SPM 1319 3 here to your English SPM, ataupun SPM English Speaking Activity. What you have to know or what you have to understand first and foremost is that dalam speaking activity itu ada three parts. Okay, but even though the three parts ni sebenarnya, I will classify it like four lah. You have like part one, part two, part three A and also part three B. So what are those? So I allow me to screen share and I can walk you through macam mana nak buat benda tu. But before that, I think uh, I just want to give you some tips lah because at the end of the day, you just nak tahu sir, ada tak, ada tak tips last minute? Ada. Saya ada beberapa tips yang boleh share dekat anda semua but basically my top tips is number one, do not use words that you are you are unfamiliar with. Any words that are new, that you are unfamiliar, hard to pronounce, big for you, tak payah pakai. Kalau besok is your, if tomorrow is your speaking test, tak payah pakai perkataan baharu. Just use whatever words that you are more confident that allows you to speak better because that will grant you more marks for SPM inshallah. Therefore, do not try anything new, big or unfamiliar. And then moving on to number two. Number two, speak naturally. Don't worry about your accent. Because some of you mungkin ada accent Sabah. Some of you mungkin ada accent Kelantan, Terengganu. Some of you mungkin ada accent or whatever. You do not have to have an accent. Tapi, cikgu, kawan saya dia memang cakap macam Mak Saleh. Piu chong, piu chong, piu, 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 piu. Okay? Kalau kawan awak ada accent, itu ialah dia punya hal, dia punya accent. Tidak ada makan lebih diberikan ke aksen ataupun tidak ada makan lebih diberikan kepada aksen. Tidak ada makan lebih yang diberi untuk aksen anda. It doesn't matter aksen anda macam mana pun, anda tetap akan dapat markah yang macam tu lah. Jadi, tak perlu ada aksen. Tetapi, uh, saya cakap tak payah ada aksen. Saya sekarang nak cakap, now I want to add, jangan pakai apa-apa slang. Slang tu apa benda ya, sir? Okay, when we talk about slang, slang ni selalunya Malaysia. Alright, uh, yang ni saya sedikit risau dalam discussion anda. Discussion anda nanti ada akan cakap, okay lah. Okay, okay. Mana accent dia? Uh, eh, sorry, mana slang dia? Slang dia lah yang lah tu. Okay. Uh, jangan pakai slang-slang. La, ba, uh, whatever. I pun tak tahu. Liao, wo. Okay, wo. Uh, jangan pakai benda-benda macam tu. Uh. Uh, they. They. Uh, I think, uh, jangan pakai they, la, Whatever accent, accent, sorry, whatever slang, slang yang awak pernah atau tak pernah dengar dekat Malaysia ni, jangan pakai just speak naturally. When I say speak naturally, I mean it could be a little bit unnatural for you if you speak English on a daily basis. But what I'm trying to get at is do not use slangs. Moving on, uh, when I say do not use slangs, there are uh, there are times where you might use other languages. Anda mungkin pakai bahasa lain selain daripada English. So yang tu jangan eh. Okay, saya tak nak dengar bahasa Korea, bahasa Tamil, bahasa Cina, bahasa Melayu. Okay, mereka semua tak nak dengar bahasa lain selain dari English. Therefore, please take care. Please jaga, please be careful to not use any other languages apart from English. Try to only and only and only speak in English if you can. Alright, if you can't help it, try not to say anything until whatever words that you are trying to voice out is in English. Alright, but uh, even then, just because you're not speaking, it moves on to step number five, avoid using feelers. Alright, Yani uh, selalunya, when you have something to say, you already thought of it through dalam minda anda, dalam minda anda, anda tengah fikir dalam bahasa Tamil, dalam bahasa Cina, dalam bahasa Melayu, anda dah fikir lah. Tapi tengah nak proses, tengah tengah apa, tengah Google Translating dalam minda anda. Sambil anda Google Translating dalam minda anda, dia ada problem sikit. Dia ada loading. Okay, bila dia ada loading tu, apa yang se sedikit takut se ataupun sedikit risau is, saya takut awak nanti, awak akan keluarkan fillers. Fillers ni ialah bunyi-bunyi. Hmm, err, uh, hmm. Saya pun tak tahulah filler-filler tu. Sebab as you can hear from my recording, se ada tak pakai filler. Maybe ada, maybe tak ada, tapi saya agak confident Fillers yang saya pakai ataupun keluar dari mulut saya dalam video ini sama ada edited ataupun tak edited, crop ataupun tak crop, saya kurang menggunakan filler. So, in your speaking test nanti SPM 2.19-3, avoid using fillers. Fillers tu ialah bunyi-bunyi lah. Okay. And then moving on to number 6 ataupun my number 6 tip is you are actually allowed to ask questions. Sebenarnya boleh. Okay. Anda boleh tanya soalan. Tak salah pun. Okay. 
That, but when I say you are allowed to ask questions, there are three situations where you are allowed to ask questions. Number one, when you do not understand. Number two, when you didn't, like you generally didn't hear. Tak tahu kenapa. Maybe ada angin, lintangan angin yang kuat berlalu. Ada ribut taufan lalu hutan mius mius. Speaking text, I have no idea. But you are allowed to ask when you couldn't hear. Tak boleh dengar. Uh, didn't hear, you boleh tanya. And then... Uh, you juga boleh tanya to buy time. Allow me to explain one by one. Okay, cikgu. Yang number one ni, tadi cikgu cakap, uh, boleh tanya bila tak faham. Tapi tidakkah itu akan menurunkan markah saya? Memang you akan turun markah. Memang you takkan dapat full mark sebab you tak faham. Tetapi, dia macam ni lah. Let's say I bagi you dalam skala lima bintang. Okay? I simplifykan the marking scheme dalam lima bintang. Kalau cikgu tanya, you jawab. Cikgu tanya, you jawab. Cikgu tanya, you jawab. Daripada lima tu, you boleh dapat lima. Ataupun dari lima tu, you mungkin boleh dapat empat. Am I right? Because you memang power. Oh, you dengar je, you boleh cakap. You dengar je, you boleh jawab. Eh? Tetapi, there are some situations for some students, okay, mereka tak faham. Bila mereka tak faham, adakah patut mereka senyap? Pandang atas, pandang kiri, pandang kanan, atas, bawah. Pusing, 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 pusing. Cari jawapan. Tapi dia tak faham apa-apa, maka dia tak boleh bagi jawapan. And then, dia tak jawab, dia dapat kosong. Ataupun dia dengar soalan tu, dia tak faham and then dia jawab yang salah. Okay, what would you like to eat? Dia jawab, yes. <laughs> okay, what would you like to eat? Where would you like to have lunch? And then dia tak faham. Dia jawab, yes. Kosong bro, kosong. <laughs> okay, so apa yang saya nak sampaikan? Dari you dah, memanglah ya, maka penuh ada lima. Kalau you tak tanya, you boleh dapat lima atau empat. Seandainya you jawab dia betul. Tapi kalau you jawab tak betul, okay, kalau you jawab salah. Kan? Kalau jawapan you tak betul, <laughs> dapat kosong. Sebab you tak faham. Oleh itu, tanya bila tak faham. So, adalah cara beberapa nak tanya. I'm sorry. I beg your pardon. Come again. Ataupun, excuse me teacher, I don't understand the word. And then you keluarkan word apa yang you tak faham tu. Right? I don't understand this word. Could you please tell me what what it means? Then cikgu tu akan water down. Dia akan cakap dalam bahasa yang lebih mudah untuk anda fahami sampailah anda boleh jawab. Therefore, dalam skala 5, bila you tak faham, it's okay to not untuk tak dapat 5 tak apa. Tak dapat 4 pun tak apa. Tapi saya nak cakap lah, kalau you tanya and then you dapatlah 2 per 5 bintang ataupun 3 per 5 bintang, tidakkah itu lebih baik and saya just nak cakap bila saya cakap dalam lima bintang ni untuk awak faham sebab kalau saya bagi awak marking scheme yang betul tu awak akan pening so this is just to oversimplify the marking scheme i'm just saying if you can't get 5 over 5 it's fine to get 3 over 5 because 3 over 5 is still better than 0 out of 5 thank you very much and then uh, when you didn't hear tu tak boleh buat apa-apa <laughs> Okay, dah tak dengar apa nak buat. So, kalau you tak dengar, kalau um, the apa the interlocutor tanya something and then you memang genuinely tak dengar, takkan you nak pandang dia. You pandang dia, dia pandang awak kan. Macam mana? Um, interlocutor pandang awak, awak pandang interlocutor. Uh, and then apa? Uh, and then cerita pun berbutik. <laughs> Mana ada cerita berbutik apa. Tapi apa yang saya nak cakap ialah, jangan buat macam tu. If you tak dengar, tolong tanya. Cakap, um, sorry, I... I, I I couldn't hear what you were saying. Could you please repeat it again or come again? I beg your pardon. There are some ways for you to ask the interlocutor back about whatever that he or she may have asked you earlier. Therefore, jangan malu, jangan takut untuk bertanya. Tanya sahaja. Now, moving on to the third point where it gets a little bit interesting. The third point of when it comes to asking question ialah sebenarnya tahu atau tak tahu anda boleh tanya to buy time apa untuk beli masa. Beli masa ni untuk apa? Okey. Beli masa ni sebenarnya ini ialah memang satu teknik yang sangat-sangat popular yang diguna pakai every day. Your teachers probably do it against you ataupun for, to you. Dia pakai teknik ni. Anda tanya soal cikgu soalan and then cikgu tu dia sebenarnya dengar tau tapi dia akan pura-pura tak dengar and then dia akan macam Apa dia? Ha, tolong ulang balik soalan. Kenapa guru-guru buat macam tu? Kenapa orang lain dekat luar dalam business negotiation pun dia akan pakai benda-benda teknik ni? Kenapa dia akan suruh orang tu repeat balik? Dia akan tanya soalan. Padahal dia tahu soalan tu apa. Dia akan tanya soalan. Padahal dia mungkin tahu jawapan tu apa. Kerana dia nak beli time. They want to buy time for the main reason is to think of an answer. Or perhaps they already have an answer but 
they would like to give a better answer. Therefore, they need a little bit more time to think. Now, be warned, tolong warning, tolong, tolong warning. Please be warned ataupun be cautious. Memanglah, I bagi you tips yang you boleh tanya soalan. Tapi tolong fahamlah. Daripada 10 soalan interlocutor tu tanya awak, janganlah 10-10 kali awak suruh dia repeat. Ha, janganlah 10-10 kali awak tanya dia balik. Okay, masa saya gunalah berpada-pada. So, dalamlah 10 soalan tu, maybe you tanya balik 3. Alright, 3 out of 10 is fine. Maksudnya, kadang-kadang boleh tanya lah. Uh, you want to buy time tiga kali out of ten, okay lah. But what I'm just trying to get at with, jangan abuse. Don't abuse your talian hayat, okay? Uh, you are the life points, jangan pakai semua. Duk tanya, 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 and tanya. Itulah yang saya nak cakap untuk tips number seven. Moving on to tips number... Eh, sorry, that was tip number six. Moving on to tips number seven. Okay, yang ni anda kena careful sikit. Sekejap lagi saya akan explain macam mana lah. Uh, bila ditanya ni, anda kena faham dia ada dua senario, okay? Ah, uh, Senario yang pertama soalan ni ialah you punya. Senario yang kedua soalan ni bukan you punya. Cikgu apa tu soalan ni saya punya ataupun soalan ni bukan saya punya? Okay, allow me to explain. Kalau soalan ni ialah you punya, maksudnya um, for example lah. Uh, 2.1 is for candidate A. 2.2 is for candidate B. So if you are candidate B, sekarang soalan berapa? Atau sekarang soalan berapa anda candidate yang mana? Tak faham kan? Okay, tak apa. Saya, saya ajar dulu je lagi saya tunjuk eh. When asked, understand whose question is it. Maksudnya, bila anda ditanya, anda kena faham siapa punya soalan. 7.1 is when the question is yours. Itu memang kau punya. Okay, your question. So, when it is your question, you have to provide within 3 to 5 sentences. Jawab dalam 3 hingga 5 ayat. Tetapi, kalau question tu bukan you punya, okay, just jawab secara padat dalam satu ayat sahaja. Answer concisely in a sentence. Cukup. Tak payah panjang-panjang. Satu ayat cukup. Okay, anda mungkin faham, mungkin tak faham. Sekejap eh. Kita stop sekejap benda ni. Saya nak ajar awak formatting sikit. Okay, baru anda faham. Okay, so bila saya cakap saya nak ajar formatting, basically, dalam speaking test, tadi saya cakap ada three parts betul. Okay, kita ada part 1, part 2, part 3A, part 3B. Okay, kita boleh anggap dia sebagai four parts lah. So, part 1 ada dua jenis question. Part 2 ada dua questions, okay. Part 1, there are two types of questions. Part 2, there are two questions. And then part 3, there are two parts where part A... You provide opinions or you give opinions. And then part 3B is where you discuss. Now, saya akan pakai this one. I will use this one, okay, part 2 untuk bagi tahu untuk ajar awak benda yang ni. Okay. Tadi saya cakap awak kena faham soalan ni soalan siapa. So, kalau kita pergi dekat part 2, part 2 ni senang saja. Because dalam part 2, dia ada dua jenis soalan. Okay. Bila saya cakap dia ada dua jenis soalan, inilah contoh dia. Kita ada part 2.1 dengan part 2.2. Yang warna biru ialah kandidat A, nama dia Soleh sebagai contoh. Yang 2.2 yang warna gold, warna kuning ialah Isha juga sebagai contoh. Kalau awak kandidat B, okay, kalau awak kandidat B, and then dia tanya 2.1, maksudnya awak tahu ini bukan soalan awak. The interlocutor akan tanya, Soleh, Talk about a memorable holiday you had at a local destination. Awak kandidat B. Awak tahu ini bukan soalan awak. Maka Soleh akan jawab 3 to 5 sentences. Sebab itu dah Soleh punya question. Tapi soalan ini boleh dilantulkan. Okay, contoh eh. Soleh, talk about a memorable holiday you had at a local destination. Lalu Soleh pun jawab. Ah. Oh, I went to Sabah to have grilled fish. The holiday was memorable because I took a lot of photos, but in my excitement, the phone fell on my foot. I screamed in pain. As I was screaming and yelling, I screamed in louder. As I was in agony, as I found that my phone fell into a drain. Jawapan dia panjang. Okay. Then interlocutor tu akan cakap, Thank you, Soleh. What about you, Isha? Talk about a memorable holiday that you had at a local destination. Bila Isha nak jawab, dia tak payah cakap panjang-panjang. Candidate B atau Isha atau awak akan jawab pendek je, sepatah je. 
Oh, I went to Langkawi and it was awesome. Cukup. Saya ulang balik. Oh, I went to Langkawi and it was awesome. Cukup. Nampak tak? Jawapan soleh lebih panjang. Jawapan soleh, jawapan kandidat A untuk jawab question 2.1 lebih panjang, lebih elaboratif sebab itu memang soalan dia. Untuk anda yang kandidat B, ini bukan soalan anda. Jawab sepat, bukan jawab sepatah lah. Jawab dalam satu sentence je. I went to Langkawi. Okay, and it was awesome. Inilah maksud saya. Kalau soalan tu awak punya, jawab panjang sikit. Kalau soalan tu bukan awak punya, jawab pendek je. In a sentence. In a sentence, sentence a sentence maksudnya satu ayat sahaja, tak payah banyak-banyak. Okay, you kena faham soalan tu siapa punya. Okay, sama lah untuk part one. Tadi saya ajar part, tadi saya ajar apa? Tadi saya ajar part tu kan. Okay, kalau part one pun sama. Okay, part one dia boleh tanya apa ni? Part one dia boleh tanya sama ada personal information iaitu hal peribadi anda atau rutin activity, something yang you selalu buat. Okay. So, bila kita sembang pasal part 1 juga, dia boleh jadi sama di mana soalan itu boleh dilantulkan. Let's take a look dekat sini. Ha, sama juga, warna biru ialah kandidat A ataupun saya namakan dia Soleh. Warna gold ialah kandidat B yang saya namakan Isha dekat sini. So, contohlah dia tanya Soleh. Soleh, how do you spend your free time? Sebab ini ialah soalan untuk Soleh. Memang warna biru ni untuk kandidat A ataupun Soleh, maka Soleh akan jawab. Oh, in my free time, I would go and study and do a little bit of gardening in the evening. At night, around 8 p.m. to 10 p.m., I usually register. Uh, I usually am in am in my classes where I sign myself up for this online tuition. I hope that this will aid me in my SPM. Thank you. Okay, so leh punya jawapan panjang, tau. panjang. Tetapi bila dia tanya, dia dah habis dekat soleh, dia mungkin nak agak pantulkan ke kandidat B. Maksudnya, ini ialah soalan kandidat A sebenarnya. Tetapi, okay, walaupun inilah soalan kandidat A, dia boleh lantulkan ke kandidat B. Bila dia lantulkan ke kandidat B dan awak adalah kandidat B, dia akan tanya, oh thank you soleh. What about you, kandidat B? What about you, Isha? How do you spend your free time? Kita faham, ini sebenarnya bukan soalan kita. Ini soalan soleh yang soleh telah jawab tadi. Maka bila anda jawab, tak payah jawab panjang-panjang. Just jawab satu, tapi sedikit elaboratif lah. Uh, oh, me, I don't like to waste time. Therefore, I spend my free time playing football. Cukup. Okay, I don't like to waste time. Therefore, whenever I have free time, I will play football. Cukup. Tak payah elaboratif sangat. Sebab awak kandidat B. Soalan tu bukan soalan anda. This is not your question. This is kandidat A punya question yang telah dilantulkan kepada anda. Therefore, anda jawab seketul macam tu. Cukup. Alright. Tapi, janganlah jawab one-worded. Football. <laughs> okay. Football. <laughs> tak boleh. No. Okay. Bila saya cakap jawab tu, dia tak payah panjang macam what, how you're supposed to do. Because you know this is not your question. But, dia kena still reasonable jugalah. Uh, I don't like to waste time, therefore, we, whenever I have free time, I would sharpen my skills playing football. Cukup, you know. Lepas tu, lepas you cakap, oh, you tak suka balik masa, you suka main football. And then, dia akan, then interlocutor tu akan cakap, oh, thank you, Isha. Now, tell us about your favorite TV program. Ha, time ni, memang soalan anda, barulah anda akan jawab. My favorite TV program would be, ha, awak cakap lah apa-apa TV program, saya tak tahu, saya tak boleh fikirkan. Awak cakaplah Running Man ke apa-apa I like to watch Running Man. Because in school, I learn English, Bahasa Malaysia and Bahasa Arab. Running Man is the one and only time when I can hear another language apart those that I mentioned. I really enjoy watching Running Man as my ears are relieved to hear another language. It's a refreshing experience. Macam tu, okay. Ha, saya tak tahu lah TV program apa. And by the way, saya cakap ni saya main spontan je. Saya tak ada skrip, tak ada apa-apa pun. Ni first time saya buat video macam ni. Sebelum SPM. So, maafkan saya lah kalau saya ada apa-apa yang salah. Mungkin Running Man tu. Sir, Running Man bukan Korea. Sir, Running Man Thailand. Kalau Running Man Thailand, saya minta maaf. Saya betul-betul tak tahu lah saya main sebut je. Tapi pokoknya awak faham apa yang saya nak sampaikan. Iaitu dalam tip yang terakhir ataupun tip yang ketujuh. Basically, you kena faham soalan tu siapa punya, awak punya ke, bukan awak punya. Bila saya cakap bukan awak punya, maksudnya soalan tu ialah kandidat lain punya yang telah dilantulkan pada awak, kepada awak. Tetapi, as you have probably realised, uh, Sir, yang soalan lantul ni kandidat B je ke akan terima lantulan? Tidak. Okey, tidak. 
dia mungkin akan lantukan ke, kepada kandidat A juga. Maksudnya, uh, dia tanya kandidat A. And then dia lantulkan soalan kandidat A kepada kandidat B. Ada kandidat B jawab soalan yang telah dilantulkan. Lepas kandidat B jawab soalan yang telah dilantulkan, mungkin apa bukan mungkin yang pastinya kandidat B akan terima dia punya actual soalan. Okey, lepas dia jawab dia punya actual soalan, interlocutor tu boleh lantulkan lantulkan soalan sebenar kandidat B kepada kandidat A. Maka you kena duduk and you kena diam and you kena fikirkan jawapan seandainya soalan tersebut dilantulkan kepada anda. Saya ulang balik kerana benda ni sangat-sangat penting. This is an individual work. You cannot talk, you cannot discuss with your partner. However, you have to understand whether it's your question or not. That is number one. Once you've understood whether it's your question or not, when you know it's not your question, okay, you still have to sit down, be calm and still listen and still think of an answer because... The question may or may not mungkin atau tak mungkin dilantulkan kepada anda. So you still kena duduk and you still kena stand by and you still kena fikirkan jawapan. Suka ke tak suka, itulah cara dia. So please understand that part. Okay? If it's your question, you have to answer a bit uh, elaboratively. But if it's not, bagi satu sentence yang tak pendek sangat, asalkan bukan one word. Saya cakap jawab one sentence, saya tak cakap jawab one word. One word itu sepatah perkataannya. What do you like to do in your free time? Football. Football. Tapi ingat eh, tip-tip lain. Tip-tip lain contohnya jangan pakai slang. Oh, football lah. <laughs> okay, football lah. Jangan pakai lah, ma. Football ya. Uh, football. Uh, uh, ataupun day, football. <laughs> uh, day, I love to play football. <laughs> uh, janganlah tiba-tiba cakap uh, slang pula. So, awak kena gabungkan tip saya yang tujuh tu. Jadikan... Satu amalan untuk esok. So, jom quickly recap what are the seven tips. Basically, tip number one saya dah cakap tadi. Kalau ada perkataan baru yang you maybe dengar dekat TikTok malam ni ke apa kan. Saya just nak cakap. Ah, if you're not familiar with those words, okay, you cannot pronounce, you cannot remember, tak boleh hafal ke apa. Avoid. Okay? Avoid using new words, big words or unfamiliar words. Tak payah. Number two, speak naturally. Don't worry about your accent. But you have to um, you have to speak clearly lah. Pronunciation anda kena jelas. Pronunciation tu ialah macam mana? Contoh pronunciation yang saya boleh fikirkan ialah kalau dekat sini saya ada uh, saya ada bagi contoh eh. Uh, pronunciation you have to speak clearly. Paper versus paper. Tak sama eh. Satu ni kertas. Ini ialah lada. <laughs> yeah, bird versus bird. Bird ni ialah lahir. Alright. Bird ni ialah burung. Ah, uh, Yang ni untuk singular, yang ni untuk plural. Yang ni ialah this. Dia bunyi dia macam ni, D-I-S. Tetapi inilah this. Bunyi dia ala-ala D-H-I-Z. This. Tak sama ya. So, yang penting ialah you punya pronunciation. You have to speak clearly. You have to speak properly. It's never ever about your accent. Okay, accent tak penting. Yang penting ialah pronunciation. Tak sama langsung. Tak ada makan lebih kalau awak cakap macam Mak Saleh. Alright. Okay, yang you kena cakap ialah dengan... yang Cara yang patut you cakap ialah smooth, confident. Itu caranya. Bukan bukan accent. Slang. Okay. Ha, football lah. Day semua. Jangan. Okay. Tak ada slang. Number four and number five is basically... Do not use any other languages. Hanya English sahaja. Okay, don't use any languages. Sebab dia akan terkeluar. Confirm akan terkeluar. So, please don't. And avoid using fillers. Fillers ialah bunyi-bunyi yang tak diwelcomekan. Number six, basically, you sebenarnya digalakkan. Bukan digalakkan lah. You sebenarnya dibenarkan untuk tanya question. As for number one, it's okay if you cannot get five over five. Okay, bintang anda, rating anda tak dapat lima per lima. Tak apa. Dapat tiga per lima is still better than kosong per lima. Dapat tiga per lima is also better than dapat satu per lima. Jangan over um, egoistic di mana anda tak nak tanya and then you end up getting zero ataupun one mark. Sangat-sangat tak best. Tanya je kalau you tak faham. It's okay to get three. Asalkan tak dapat one, asalkan tak dapat zero. Alright? And But if you memang betul-betul tak dengar, it's okay, it's fine. You boleh je tanya. Or kalau you power, 
Sekali-sekala you boleh tanya just to buy time. Okay, you you actually you heard the question ni. Tapi saja je nak beli time, nak melengkang-lengkangkan masa sikit. Saya cakap sikit eh, sikit je. Sikit je nak melengkang-lengkangkan masa because you want to think of a more solid. You have want to think you want to think for a more um more elaborative answer. Therefore, you can buy time by asking questions. Last but not least, ataupun the most ultimately, uh, the, the most ultimate way, ataupun the most ultimate tips lah for you to answer um, your speaking test tomorrow or whenever it is, is for you to understand who's question in. Okay, siapa punya? Kalau awak punya, jawab panjang sikit. Tapi kalau bukan awak punya, then jawab dalam satu ayat cukup. Saya cakap in a sentence, I didn't say in a word. Maksudnya jangan jawab sepatah, jawab dalam satu ayat. Alright, so itu ialah tips dia lah. Uh, and then kita just nak tengok. Sir, saya tak tahu lah speaking test nanti macam mana. Kalau you tak tahu speaking test, sekarang saya nak masuk to the second part of my video where I want to talk about the formatting. So basically dalam speaking test, it will go on for approximately 13 minutes. Okay, berapa banyak? 13 minit. 13 minit darab 60, berapa minit? Saya, eh. 60 saat. Darab 60 saat, quick math, saya tak pasti berapa. Tapi kalau saya kena teka lah, dia mungkin dalam 1380 atau 1280. Saya tak tahu, saya bukan cikgu math. That's why I don't teach you math. If I teach you math, hmm. Alah, Fatihah. Anyway, <laughs> right. Okay, so there are three parts of your speaking test for 13 minutes. Okay, 13 minit eh, 13 minit eh. Dalam 13 minit tu, dia akan tanya anda part 1. Anda tak boleh tak tahu macam mana nak jawab sebab dia tanya you personal info dengan rutin harian. Bila saya cakap rutin harian ataupun personal info, jom kita tengoklah contoh-contoh dia. Sir, ada contoh-contoh lah question apa yang keluar? Bukan-bukan, akan keluar lah. Ada contoh tak personal info? Ada contoh tak rutin aktiviti? Ada. Okay. Ah Inilah yang you boleh tengok. That's why I cakap tadi, you cannot say you don't know, you cannot say nothing because soalan-soalan dia sangat simple, sangat basic. Bila dia tanya dia, bila dia tanya dia, bila dia tanya awak, what do you do when you wake up? You mana boleh cakap, don't know, tetap. Don't know. Nothing. Mana boleh? Awak tidur tak bangun-bangun ke? Kan? Tengok lah. Apa? Memang tidur tu memang al-fatihah tu lah. Gone lah. Masuk alam lain lah. Mana boleh? Tak? Kan? <laughs> you mesti buat something. What do you do after coming back from school? Nothing. Ha? Huh? Kenapa nothing? Like after you, like like when you go to school, you never, you, you pergi sekolah, you tak balik-balik lah. Huh? How do you spend your free time? Sir, I don't have free time. I always do uh, itu kerja khusus, kerja khusus. You know, kerja khusus, assignment, assignment. Uh, I do assignment, I sleep. I wake up, I go school. And then I wake up, uh, sorry, and then after I go school, I come home, I do kerja khusus. And then I sleep, and then I wake up, I um, I, go, I don't have time, cikgu. I no free time. Hey, mana ada orang tak ada free time? Kalau awak tak ada free time, then macam mana awak? Uh, sorry, kalau awak tak ada free time, adakah awak... Duduk dekat sekolah tu memang 24 jam sehari, 7 hari seminggu. Ataukah mungkin anda duduk dekat sekolah tu selama 25 jam, 8 hari seminggu, tak balik-balik. Itu bukan sekolah, itu penjara nama dia. Okay? Tapi saya tak nak cakap banyak-banyak, saya tak nak bising. Lah. So you tak boleh cakap I don't know ataupun apa. Uh, person info, how many siblings do you have? Mana boleh cakap I don't know. Ada berapa adik-beradik bro? Tak. Awak tak kenal adik-beradik awak siapa ke? Saya faham ada orang ada masalah keluarga. Tapi kalau tak tahu adik-beradik tu, itu masalah keluarga tu agaklah agak lain level juga kan. Saya bukan nak kata apa lah. Tapi saya doa agar segala urusan anda dipermudahkan. Seandainya anda tak tahu berapa banyak adik-beradik anda ada. Uh, sir, I don't know how many siblings I have ah, But I think I got five. Maybe got a bit more. Maybe lah, maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Kan? Terkejut interlocutor tu. Macam mana awak boleh tak pasti berapa banyak siblings ya? Eh? But anyway, anda boleh pause the video dekat sini. Dan anda boleh tengok dua jenis soalan. Tapi apa saya nak cakap dekat part 1 ni. Ini adalah part yang anda patut rebut markah. Bila saya cakap rebut markah, bukan rebut dengan partner awak. Rebut untuk diri awak. Okay? Bila awak tanya, bila ditanya, bila awak ditanya. When you are asked these questions, you are expected to be able to answer these questions. Because... These questions, you have to understand, number one, tidak ada jawapan salah, tidak ada jawapan betul. Which I will talk about in a short bit. There's no right, there's no wrong. Just answer only. Tak payah fikir banyak. And then number two, inilah something yang semua orang boleh jawab di mana it's impossible that you are not able to answer. Contohlah dekat sini, 
when do you usually wake up on the weekends you mana boleh tak boleh jawab kenapa engkau tidur jumaat bangun-bangun dah isnin ke memang power saya takut nanti awak tidur lagi 3000 tahun baru awak bangun balik eh risau kan bangun-bangun dah era lain kan mana boleh you tak tahu alright who is your best friend teacher i got no best friend all my friends all backstabbers Uh, ataupun teacher, I have no best friend. Everyone, uh, everyone is cool or select, select. They don't want me, no friend. Mana boleh? Alright, jawab lah. Tapi ya, uh, seandainya lah, anda betul 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 tak ada jawab part one, which is a very rare special case. I just nak cakap, I just nak bagi tahu satu benda saja bahawa kalau macam tu cubalah gorengkan jawapan. Sembang pasal goreng, dia sangat sangat nice when it comes to food. Okay, bila saya cakap pasal goreng, selalunya dia related dengan Malaysian with food. Kenapa? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, inilah makanan-makanan. Dan dekat Malaysia, you have to be careful with some food. Kerana there are some food, ada dia punya English word. Kalau tak pakai, masak. Tapi kalau some makanan pula, some food, dia tak ada dia punya English equivalent. Contohnya, nasi lemak. Apa itu nasi lemak in English? Apa itu nasi dagang in English? Jangan cakap trade rice. And trade and nasi dagang dagang tu trade trading hmm trade rice i had trade rice i had trade rice for lunch who <laughs> trade rice eh mana ada trade rice nasi dagang mana ada kita tapi you tak boleh cakap oh i had nasi goreng for lunch mana boleh cakap you had nasi goreng for lunch kan nasi goreng in english ialah fried rice itulah yang saya nak cakap be careful about food apa yang saya nak cakap ialah Uh, tolong fikirkan satu jawapan yang sangat mudah lah. So for example, if you are able to think of one answer, just use that answer for food. If they ask you about food, itulah jawapan anda. Okay? Kalau tanya pasal makanan, itulah jawapan anda. So for example lah, uh, I eat oats, O-A-T-S. Awak mungkin pelik kan, sir. Mana ada orang Malaysia, orang Melayu makan oats pagi-pagi, sir. Oats ni selalu mak saleh yang acah-acah nak fit kan. Nak acah-acah nak, you know, nak six pack. Kan? Dia orang makan oats, Malaysia mana makan oats, tak apa. You just cakap you makan oats, okay. And then dia bunyilah macam English sikit, nampak macam orang ni pandai. Kalau dia, kalau lah interlocutor tu tanya, you what do you eat oats with? You goreng lah, apa-apa. Cakap lah, I eat oats with uh, sambal, kemeng. I, I eat oats with sambal, kemeng. Tak salah, awak punya oats, awak punya breakfast. Awak nak makan apa-apa, awak makan lah. <laughs> Sejak bila kan, interlocutor nak cakap, eh mana boleh makan oats dengan sambal, kemeng. <laughs> Apa yang saya nak sampaikan ialah tidak ada jawapan salah atau tidak ada jawapan betul. Alright. You nak makan oats dengan milk. If you want, if you have oats with milk, okay. If you have oats with yogurt, okay. If you have oats with sambal, kata engkau lah. Engkau punya perut, engkau punya makanan, engkau makanlah apa-apa. Yang penting ini ialah speaking test. Dalam speaking test, you kena jawab accordingly but jangan salah jawab. Okay. Nasi goreng is fried rice. Nasi lemak tak ada English equivalent. So when it comes to food, it gets a little bit tricky. Just be safe and choose the choose a right answer that can be used. Okay, itulah yang saya nak cakap. But basically, that's the end of part one. Ataupun uh, this part where they ask you about your personal info ataupun your daily routine. Daily routine is something that you do every almost almost every day. Moving on to part two. Basically, kalau you notice, dia akan ada 2.1, dia akan ada 2.2. Alright, eh? Oh sorry. Um, so, hey. Okay. Moving on to part two. Basically, there's 2.1 and then there's 2.2. Usually, 2.1 is for candidate A, and then 2.2 usually is for candidate B. You just have to know that. All right. You have to know that because kita nak tahu uh, soalan awak ke bukan. Moving on to part three. Now, part three ni yang saya cakap sebenarnya lah. I like to consider part three ni ada dua bahagian. Nanya. Number one ialah where you give opinions. Okay. Okay, dia sambil-sambil you give opinion tu sebenarnya, sambil-sambil bagi opinion, sebenarnya awak discuss juga sebenarnya. Sebenarnya, it depends lah, it depends. Some partner, partner A bagi opinion, lepas tu partner B bagi opinion, lepas tu mereka discuss what's the conclusion. Some uh, pair, okay, some pair, pas, some pair, pass, tak saya ni pula S tau. Some pasangan pula, dia sedikit, uh, dia memang betul-betul buat discussion, okay. Nak nak bagi faham macam ni lah, saya tunjuk lah. Okay, ini ialah anda punya question. So, apa yang saya cakap tadi, kadang-kadang 
uh, A akan ambil self uh, improve self confidence dia akan cakap lepas tu B mungkin setuju mungkin tak setuju itulah saya cakap dia tengah discuss sekarang tapi ada ada partner dia tak buat macam tu ada partner uh, A uh, the benefit of this sport is first and foremost it improve self confidence and then dia huraikan I think self uh, I think Uh, your self confidence will be improved with the with the with practicing team sports regularly i have a friend who used to be very timid and very uh, very shy but ever since he took up team sports he has improved his self confidence tremendously secondly i believe that team sports enhances teamwork skills right i wasn't the best team player ever since i was small but my coach has taught me the essence the importance the essence of working in a team as they say teamwork as they say teamwork makes sorry teamwork makes the dream work <laughs> teamwork makes the dream work <laughs> the satu satu is it last but not least i believe that team sports may develop social skills which i think is rather important let's face the fact We can never survive in the world out there without having good social skills. And where better place to begin with team sports? What about you, candidate B? Ah, lepas tu baru What about you, candidate B? What do you think? Ah, I think I agree with some of your points. However, I have some points of my own. Okay, allow me to begin. Firstly, candidate B cakapkan, ah, the benefit of team sports is to receive social support. All right. When we talk about social support, it's very important because depression is real. When we talk about being depressed, I think or I like to assume that people uh, that people who suffers from depression do not receive social support. And I think team sports can provide such measures. Moving on to my second point, I think when we are involved in these team sports, we are provided the opportunity to share different opinions different opinions can be shared through team sports when we are discussing strategy or perhaps when we are trying to implement something during ataupun in the midst of the game and last but not least i dearly believe that when it comes to team sport it helps us to solve problems okay macam tu so apa yang saya nak cakap ialah it really depends Sometimes dia akan jadi macam ni. A cakap dulu, lepas tu B sambung. Tapi kadang-kadang A cakap satu, B reply. B cakap satu, A reply. Itu yang saya nak cakap. So it really really depends tapi kalau seada apa-apa tips untuk part 3 ni, saya nak cakap besok speaking test to some of you pada 17 hari bulan ataupun okey ataupun maybe speaking test yang lama lagi, what you do is you cari partner you. Tunjuk benda ni. Eh, hey, partner. Nanti akan ada speaking test. Dalam speaking test tu nanti, kita akan ada part 3. Part 3 tu nanti, kita kena bincang. Untuk nak bagi benda ni smooth, nak bagi proses ni cantik, lancar, jalan macam butter, apa yang kita akan buat ialah, kita akan bahagikan ni tau, okay? So, kita akan bahagikan dekat sini, apa-apa yang dekat atas ialah kandidat A. Apa-apa yang dekat bawah ialah kandidat B. Agree ke tak agree? Dan kita harap kawan awak agree. Okay. Tapi bila saya cakap ini, awak akan risau. So, macam mana kalau poin saya itu susah? Tak apa, gorengkan saja. And anda kena faham lagi satu benda di mana anda sekarang dah mungkin risau dah. Satu, macam mana kalau poin awak tak best? Yang kedua, macam mana nanti bila part 3B di mana kita kena discuss nanti. Okay, bila kita discuss nanti. And, cikgu, time discuss tu nanti macam mana pula ah kalau poin tu ialah poin dia, bukan poin saya. Saya kan di DA, cikgu. Tapi conclusion dia kena B punya point. You kena faham dua benda. Okay. Uh, pertama, this is a big gamble dari segi anda mungkin dapat yang best, anda mungkin dapat yang tak best. Tapi kalau anda buat macam ni, apa yang seboleh garanti ialah the process will be very smooth sailing. Memang insya Allah, memang akan smooth. Tetapi, kalau you tak split awal-awal, you masuk, awak nak yang ni, member awak nak yang macam ni, ah, dia dah macam berebut. Okay, macam berebut laki bini kan. Haa. Ah. Kau tak boleh rebut aku punya. Kau ni nak jadi penyondol ke? Aku nak dia dulu. Lepas tu baru kau nak ah, dah bergaduh kat situ satu hal kan. Jangan kan tu. So in order to avoid that from happening. I always tell my students. 
split bahagi awal-awal bukan dah masuk tu baru nak bahagi no that's not the clever that's not the smooth way to do it right so apa-apa yang you dapat you dapat ah, apa-apa yang tak dapat you tak dapat just try your best to um to ni ataupun anda boleh cuba nego ah, bila dah masuk on the end weh tadi aku cakap aku kat atas then kau kat bawah kan kau kena dik B kan tapi aku punya point semua susah bro ah then anda boleh negotiate sikit lah aku nak curi apa ni yang ni kat kau boleh tak Ah, okay. Nanti kita rebut lah, kita share kat sini lah. Kita discuss lah point ni sama-sama lah. Sebab aku macam tak lego lah. Aku punya ni susah, aku punya ni susah. Point aku tiga semua susah bro. Ah, okay, tak apalah. You boleh discuss sikit-sikit macam tu lah. Tapi, I just nak agak. Jangan masuk tak plan. Maksudnya, bila you masuk tu, you dah kena plan. And plan paling simple, paling basic is you just cakap yang atas point A, yang bawah point B. Habis cerita. You nak bahagikan macam mana, lantak awak lah. Asalkan awak bahagikan awal-awal. Kenapa? Supaya untuk menjam... So, kerana supaya agar untuk menjamin anda punya session tu nanti smooth sailing. The only thing that you akan discuss bila masuk day one tu, okay, 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 okay. Kita tengok ni, benefit of this spot. Okay, point pertama. Okay, point kedua. Okay, point ketiga. Okay, point keempat. And then point kelima. And then point keenam. Dalam point point keenam ni, apakah benefit yang paling penting eh? Uh, aku rasa lah, aku rasa lah. Sebab ini tahun 2024, kita ambil lah point yang keempat. And... Kita ambil point keempat sebab ini tahun 2024. Maksudnya, you hanya discuss mana akan jadi conclusion saja, Ringan ceritanya. So, maksudnya bila you masuk part 3, you dah tak ada sembak, you dah tak ada nak bincang awak punya point, dia punya point. Dia dah cut off a lot of this unnecessary, unsmoothness, unnecessary cut ketidaksenangan hati. So, itulah yang saya advise kat awak. Bila dah masuk, awak dah tahu mana poin awak, mana bukan poin awak and then just discuss mana akan jadi dia punya conclusion itu saja. InsyaAllah smooth. Saya percaya. Okay. Tadi saya cakap awak, kalau buat macam ni, awak risau dua benda. Satu, poin awak susah. Yang kedua, bukan poin awak jadi conclusion. Yang pasal poin pertama saya dah explain dah. Yang pasal poin kedua, awak kena faham satu benda sahaja di mana you have to understand just because you are getting A, Lepas tu, conclusion dia ialah kandidat B punya. Saya so, just nak cakap, it doesn't affect your marks at all. Tak ganggu markah langsung. Ini bukan game. Ini bukan satu pertandingan di mana nak tengok siapa menang, siapa kalah. This is a speaking test. It doesn't matter if your kandidat A and the conclusion is kandidat B punya point doesn't matter at all. Markah dia sama je. So, apa yang akan menambahkan lagi markah awak bukanlah untuk point awak jadi conclusion. Apa yang akan menambahkan lagi awak punya point ialah the fluidity of you to talk. Okay, smooth ke tak awak cakap? Bila you sebut perkataan tu, pronunciation dia jelas ke tak? Bila you cakap English, grammar awak okay ke broken? Kalau broken tu, how broken? Broken sikit ke broken barai? Kalau broken barai, awak akan dapatlah markah yang lebih kurang. Lebih kurang? Awak akan dapatlah markah yang agak kurang. Tetapi kalau mark, awak punya grammar tak broken, then you will be getting a higher mark. Itu je cerita dia. And then dia nak tengok anda ni reti bercakap ke tak? Anda ni reti menyampuk ke tak? Do you know how to agree? Do you know how to disagree? Yes, I agree with you. However, I have my points. Uh, however, I would like to rebut your opinion with. Okay. Uh, yang tu yang penting. So, bila you buat benda ni, dah sampai conclusion. Okay. So, can you repeat check out? Okay, so the conclusion is, I think, when it comes to team sports, the biggest benefits by, uh, op, sorry, the biggest benefits obtained from practicing team sports is that it teaches problem solving skills. Your ability to solve problems in daily life is the utmost important uh, skill in life. As we are bombarded with problems every day in our life. Therefore, By obtaining this through ooh, team sports, it shall help you a lot ataupun it shall aid you tremendously in life. And then awak tanya, what do you think candidate A? Bagi candidate A, awak cakap, oh yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, oh yes, I agree. So, so, boleh tak nak disagree? Kalau boleh, uh, tak taklah you nak disagree. Tapi patutnya awak disagree tadi sebelum awak ber mula bercakap. Dah mula bercakap tu, patutnya awak dah kena disagree. Awak, sorry, awak, you dah kena agree lah. Oh yes, I agree 100% with you. I think what you said earlier was very good. And I don't have anything against that. Thank you. Ah, habis. Bila dah thank you, habis ya? Habis ya? Alright. So, itulah yang saya nak cakap. Untuk speaking test, anda... 
So those are my seven tips. And then I've explained to you the formatting. So just now quick recap, the seven things and the three formats basically. Um, number one, when it comes to speaking, don't try anything new anymore. If your speaking test is tomorrow or if your speaking test is next week, sebenarnya this is no longer the time for you to be practicing or experimenting with yourself anymore. Dah habis lah, tak ada lah. Okay, uh, just go with whatever that you are most confident with. Number two, don't worry about your accent. We are Malaysians. Okay, you do not have to speak like a Brit. Okay, you do not have to go and buy a bottle of water just so that you can speak like a Brit. You do not have to do that. Okay, number three, all right, don't worry about your slang. Number four, remember only English. And number five, Avoid using fillers. Fillers ialah benda-benda yang ada bunyi, yang tak penting sangat, yang tak membawa apa-apa impact to your speech. Number six, you are actually allowed to ask questions in three scenario. Scenario number one, when you genuinely don't understand. Number two, when you genuinely didn't hear, tak dengar, for whatever reason, maybe anda macam kata zinga. Uh, number three is when you want to buy time, but use this wisely, okay? And then the last tip for you is you have to ultimately understand whether the question is really your question or is it a rebounded question ataupun dalam bahasa Malaysia, adakah itu sebenarnya soalan kandidat lagi satu tapi dilantulkan kepada anda. Jika itulah soalan kandidat lagi satu yang dilantulkan kepada anda, maka answer accordingly. If it's really your question, I suggest you to answer within three to five sentences but If it's not your question, is a soalan dilantulkan. If it's a soalan lantulan, if that's even a legit BM word, I'm not a BM teacher, I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Uh, if it's not yours, then just answer within a sentence. I don't say a word eh. A word tu sepatah. Jangan jawab sepatah. Jawab dah satu ayat. So, itulah dia. Dia put seven tips. And as for the formatting pula, there are three parts. Or I like to say... Four, okay. Part one ialah individual, di mana dia boleh tanya personal info ataupun your daily routine, things that you can for sure absolutely be able to answer. Part two, they will ask you questions. You have to know 2.1 candidate A, 2.2 candidate B. Different question, again, individual task. You are not allowed to interfere, tak boleh menyampuk langsung. And then moving on to part three, that's 3A and 3B. 3A is basically you providing your opinion. You have to know your linkers, connectors, penanda wacana, kata hubung anda, but the, the English version of it. Uh, that is where I advise you to split awal-awal. Candidate A atas, candidate B bawah, all the other way around, I don't know, you can flip a coin, you boleh lat, tali lat, tali tamplung, but lat boleh buat dua orang, so don't, don't lat. And then moving on to part three, uh, lepas dia dah lat, tali lat, tamplung, uh, dia ada the second part where you have to actually discuss. Daripada topik tu, apakah dia punya conclusion ataupun verdict, what do you think? So, you akan pakai lah perkataan macam in my opinion ataupun in uh, from my point of view, I firmly believe that uh, then you bagilah point you. So, good luck all the best. I'm so sorry for uh, remember one thing and one thing only that SPM is just an SPM, it's just an examination. And as my lecturer used to Um, tell us an examination is just an examination where it just tests you in a certain aspect, in a certain field sahaja. Whatever results yang you dapat, it does not define who you are in life. So don't worry, you might score English, which is what I hope. Good luck, all the best. But even if you don't score English, it does not mean awak akan mati masuk dalam keramda masuk dalam kubur dalam keadaan sebagai salah orang manusia yang tak reti cakap English langsung because I just nak share I have some friends in life yang time SPM dia tak power English tetapi sekarang dia boleh cakap, boleh baca, can read, write, speak English okay, can listen to English very, very well so just understand that SPM is just not really uh, SPM is important but it's not everything in life So good luck, all the best. I'm sorry, Paul, and I'll see ya on the other side.